Yeah, go. In this video, we're going to be looking at how Newton's three laws of motion apply to roller coasters. Now I know what you're thinking. Aren't roller coasters usually used in, as an example of potential and kinetic energy? Well, yes, but it's applicable here as well. Now let's slow this down. And stop. Now right here we have an example of Newton's second law of motion, F equals ma. The forces you experience when you drop from a great height on a roller coaster, the so-called g-forces, can actually be calculated by using the mass of the whole system, all the trains and passengers, multiplied by the gravitational force of 9.81 meters per second squared. Now let's go a little further. Now stop. Here we have an example of Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction. When you go around the loop of a roller coaster, you feel as if the seats are pushing against you. They are, but what most people don't know is, they're actually pushing back with the exact same amount of force right back against the seats of the roller coaster. Now let's continue. Now here we start to see an example of Newton's first law of motion, that every object in a state of uniform motion tends to remain in that state of motion unless an external force is applied to it. Now as you can see, the cart begins to slow down at various points here before completely coming to a stop on the carpet. This is because the external force acting on it the entire time is the force of friction. The friction causes the wheels to spin slower as it navigates the extremely sharp turn that we put in, and when it reaches the carpet, friction causes it to stop completely because the external force is greater than the uh, inertia of the cart. Thanks for watching, and I'm glad I could earn some extra credit while helping educate some people about Newton's laws of motion.